Hey everyone, so I have another book review today and it's been quite a while since I did a proper book review. They've all been little like TV books. Um, but this is Scissors by Ray Garton. You may have heard me talk about Ray Garton on my other channel, Amy the Teenage Witch. Which if I remember I will put the link down there. Um, and he's written some of my favourite books. Um, all That Glitters, um, a couple of other names, names of books really aren't, I'm not that good with them. Um, and he's also written some under a different name as well. So you may have ever heard me mention him before. And I've been after this book for ages and when I first started reading it I, I actually nearly threw up and I'd like to point out just now that this A is not for the faint hearted and B is not for young kids it is definitely not for young kids I mean it's not the language would be quite hard for kids to understand anyway um, but it is definitely not for young kids so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out just a, a paragraph from the opening just to give you an indication as to as to what it's like. I'm not going to read the paragraph from the very beginning. I'm just going to read it. Let me find the place. Um, okay, I'm just going to read it from just this little bit here and a little bit over the page. Um, right. This will hurt Stuart. You may scream if you like. Dr. Ferguson grins down at him. He lifts his head again as the needle is stabbed into the head of the penis. The pain is exquisite and radiates through his body all the way up to his throat where, where it threatens to cut off his scream. His penis becomes numb, but the throbbing pain lingers deep. Something else is ripped open. Stuart looks up to see Dr. Ferguson removing a pair of scissors from the wrapper. Three inch blades glimmer beneath the fluorescent lights as Dr. Ferguson opens, his, opens and closes them. Snick, snick, snick. You won't feel this at all, the doctor says as he leans over Stuart. Stuart struggles and his mother pushes his, push, pushes his shoulders, sorry I can't say the word shoulders, Pushes his shoulders down harder as she says, it has to be done, Stewie. You won't, you won't feel it and it'll all be over before you know it. He lifts his head, still screaming, just in time to see the scissors close with a metallic snick. In time to see the head of his penis pop into the air, then drop down between his thighs as dark blood bubbles up and dribbles down his penis over his groin. Blood spurts into the air in jets of red, spattering Dr. Ferguson's white coat. And I'm going to stop there. If you haven't thrown up already, you may wish to. It's very graphic and it's very like, ooh. And the context behind that is Stuart, our main character, had an operation when he was a little boy, as we learn at the beginning, um, which would help him pee right, you know. And the operation has left him with haunting memories, you know. He, he remembered it, you know, it's quite a tragic experience for him. And these memories haunt him and he starts to encounter all these different problems and with this doctor and he's... Those around him quickly think that he is going mad, but there is more to it than that, and it's quite intense at some points because you you're thinking, Stuart must be crazy. This can't be really happening, and then you remember that you're reading a horror novel, and in a horror novel, any anything is possible, almost as much as anything is possible in a sci-fi. It's it's the the, the realms of creativity are just as open here. And it's it's very, um, as I said, it is very graphic. And sometimes you, you're sitting thinking, did that really happen? Could that happen in real life? Some of the things in it you think, nah, it's, it, it couldn't be real. And then you stop and think, well, hang on a minute. Why why couldn't it happen, you know? So it does suck you in very much. I, I actually read that bit, that opening paragraph there, which was clearly poorly read out by me. Um, and maybe the first... 25 pages in a train station which is not the best of places to begin a book like this when you had no idea just how brutal it was going to be and um, it does there are bits of calm where it's not as it, you could sometimes you feel like it's not as you forget how intense it is when you're reading a few a few bits of anything ah oh, it's fine and then you relax your mind and you're just going for a nice read then bam the next paragraph makes you want to throw up again but it's not a bad thing it's a really good thing because it really terrifies you Last night, I knew I was going to finish it. I was determined to finish it last night. And I was on page... Well, I would... There's 300 and... Hang on. Bear with me. 322 pages. And I had just over 100 pages. So I was about 208 or something pages in. And I, so I read over 100 pages last night straight. And I didn't get to sleep. I had very difficult tr troubles getting to sleep last night. I was like, okay, I'm a bit spooked. It's not very often that a book will do that to me. Films, yes. Films scare the living daylights out of me. No bother. But the foundations of a good book is to scare me. Or to make me laugh. But obviously this is really a book packed with hilarity. Although there are one or two bits which did make me laugh. And my favourite bit that made me laugh is the sentence, The cat burped up a hairball. I'm a big cat lover so anything to do with cats is great. And also, 
as a picture of Regarten with one of his cats at the back there. Which is cute. Um, he has a lot of cats. So for me that was really quite sweet and I've never heard the phrase burped up a hairball. I've always heard like hocked up or choked up or spat up. Never burped up so that I liked. Um, but that is actually quite early on so the humour does die down a bit. And you're sitting reading and my eyes were like this all the way through. You know my eyes were popping out my head. It was insane. As I was saying about two minutes ago because I, 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 I digress easily. It's very rare that a book will scare me. Films, no bother. But books very re rarely leave an impact on me. Um, I did worry that I was going to have, well, I didn't worry because I didn't expect it to, but you always, when reading a book that's really good throughout it, that the ending is going to be quite faded and rushed. Not a problem here, the ending is fantastic. Obviously I'm not going to tell you what the ending is, but for those of you who have read this or have read this once I've made this video, you go and buy it, I cried at the end. And now I don't know whether I cried <laughs> because it was sad or if I cried because it was just surprise. I just, I just didn't expect it and it was... I, I got quite choked up, it was quite emotional and not not what I expected, I will be honest with you. Um, it's opened my eyes to a whole new realm of um, horror novels. I'm not, I'm not that clued up on horror novels, I haven't read many of them, mainly because they're just so hard to find, you know? Like my local library has a whole shelf of them, but they're not really horror novels. They're, 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 they're you know, they're cushy horror, 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 horror novels, they're not good, they're, they're, I've read a couple of them and I'm just like, ugh. But this one I really liked. Obviously the cover itself is really kind of gruesome. They're more like um, your fingernail scissors, the ones you cut to trim your nails. They're more like them. Um, and obviously it's a really gruesome, gruesome, gruesome thing to think about. But it is absolutely fantastic. This is the first non-Sabrina book by Ray Garten I read. Also, if you haven't read my interview with Ray Garten, go check it out. The link should be in the below bar if I remember to put it there. Um, you know, lovely guy, fantastic, fantastic writer as well. Plus he likes cats, which is always great. Um, but yeah, go and buy if you can. I bought my copy for, um, I can't remember the exact price. It was about £4, £5 on eBay. Um, it's a little bit more expensive on Amazon, but you can get it on eBay, just a little bit cheaper. And um, the price is because he is an American writer. Some of the um, words, you know, are Americanisms, but it's, you know, it's easy to follow if you're, if you're not clued up, it's easy enough to follow. Um, RRP $7.99 US dollars, dollars Canadian dollars five ninety nine. dollars um, GBP. So it's really, oh and 14 95 Australian dollars. Is the Australian dollar really that expensive compared to the rest? I always thought it was more like the, the, the US dollar. But anyway, yeah. So I'm getting sidetracked. See, I easily get sidetracked. <laughs> to be honest with you, I want to get sidetracked. I don't really want to have to think about the, the main, the, the, the doctor character in this any longer. And that's not a bad thing because it's not like I can't read this because I'm so scared. It's more like I have to read this because I'm scared. I have to find out what's wrong. I have to find out how it resolves so I can let my mind rest. And when it did resolve, it resolves, but as, as most good books do, it leaves on a slight cliffhanger that will probably never be solved. That That's there for you to make your own mind up about. And it's one of those things which just left me thinking, you know what, I actually believe that this can really happen. I You'll know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say what it is if you haven't read it because it will spoil it. But if, for those of you who have read it and those of you who will read it afterwards, what actually happens, I believe could happen. I'm, I mean, I, I'm a firm, not a believer in magic. Um, but believer isn't the right word. But I, I, well, I believe I follow paranormal. I believe that things that we cannot explain happen. And I believe that this is the same situation. Um, but enough rambling about this. Go and check it out. Go and buy it. Amazon, eBay, I think play.com might have it. I struggle to find this author, I've struggled to find Ray Garden in British bookstores like WH Smith and Waterstones just because um, I do basically, but online is your best option, obviously in the States I'm sure local bookstores will have it. Um, but that's it for just now, so go read it, go let me know your thoughts and also do video responses talking about it, I'd love that. Um, yeah, so go and check out my interview with Ray Garden as well and that's it for just now, so I'll see you all next time, bye!